I am Sheila Walsh, Program Coordinator of the Radio Humber Diploma Program here at Humber College. Welcome to On the Radio, a webisode feature where we speak with industry experts and Humber alumni on all things radio. Today, I speak with Rudy Blair. Okay, hi everybody. We're back with uh, Career Prep and today's guest who joined us and spoke to the class is Radio Humber alum, Radio Humber Hall of Famer, multi-award winning um, alum and soon to be recipient of the 2014 Harry Jerome Award for Media. Rudy Blair, everybody. Rudy touched on a lot of uh, great um, uh, topics with career prep while he spoke to us. One being, um, actually I want to talk about two, but the one being internship. And you gave us a story about, uh, you know, your your uh, observations on a good intern and a bad intern. And of course the class is about to uh, embark on internships. Some of them are already doing them, some of them are about to jump in. So so give me an example of a standout internship. How about we start with the positive? Well, straight off the bat, as soon as you get into wherever you're going to be working, introducing yourself to everybody. Hi, my name is Stand Up. Good and firm handshake, big smile. Uh, ask whoever they're going to be speaking with, like, you know, what you're interested in and uh, if you can help with anything that is going to be going on. The other thing is, once that actually happens, uh, be willing to, very important, answer the phones. A lot of times phones are ringing and interns will ignore that. If you're one of those interns who's willing to answer the phone, put them on hold and then ask, you know, who it's going to be for, that gets you to actually know who the people you're going to be working around with for the next couple of months. It makes a huge difference. And the other thing too is just be willing to do what needs to be done. So if somebody's asking you to do something and you're not sure, just say, okay, I'm not sure how to do this, but I want to do it. How can I do this? People will always be willing to help you. Now, it's not like we can do this 24-7 where we have the time because we've got our own jobs. But if you need help with something that's going to be able to get accomplished what we need to get done, they're going to help you out. So those are key points, I think, right off the bat. So don't be afraid because I know a lot of people are coming out of school. They're intimidated working with people such as yourself. So you're saying, you know, you're human and just just uh, not to be intimidated. Put it this way. Be willing to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I still make mistakes. I mean, you don't know how many times I've gone on the air and said the wrong name about somebody and just going, oh, I'm such an idiot. It's going to happen. We work so many hours. We're tired. We can't concentrate all the time. It's going to happen. But if you're willing to make those mistakes, but not make them again and try to improve, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, when it comes to a bad intern, somebody who doesn't introduce themselves, somebody who is very quiet, and more importantly, somebody when you're asking them to do something, they don't do it. Um, enthusiasm is the key in this business. If you want to show people that you're interested, it's going to work. Plus, um, wherever you're going to intern, do a little research of the company. Uh, learn who the players are in there. Learn about what the company is all about and more importantly listen to the radio station or tv station if you're watching uh about it so that when you come in you can talk about and say hey uh to a certain reporter i heard that story you did the other day i really liked what you did can you tell me how you so it just shows that you are interested in it. and trust me that takes it to another level when the boss comes around and somebody is saying that person is really key on because they know a lot about what's going on with the radio station. Let's, let's further that. So so you have said that, you know, if, if you like someone, you'll advocate for them to get a job. And sometimes that doesn't always work out right away, but, but you'll remember them, right? Oh, absolutely. So that when a position does come up and it has happened, we'll go, you remember that person that uh, used to... Let's try to get them back in, and it has happened many times. Okay, so make that, that good impression. The other thing I want to talk to you about, because uh, you are, you know, here I am interviewing the interviewer, but uh, <laughs> um, a lot of people come to this course hoping to be uh, in some form of uh, an interview role, be it with music or, or sports figures or, you know, um, political figures, whatever. Uh, some of your um, techniques and advice for, for them would be what? Have fun with it, for one. Um, make a conversation conversational is the other don't go into with an attitude like for example I remember speaking to some classes and there would be students who would say oh I wouldn't interview somebody like Britney Spears she's not real blah 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 well that's not your job 
to put her down. Your job is to interview her and do a good interview with her because she does have fans. Your job is to get the best you can out of that person that you're speaking with and try to get the information out there. My thing is this, um, and here's where a lot of mistakes happen when it comes to celebrity, and I hate the word, celebrity interviewers. They tend to think that they're the celebrity. I am not a celebrity. I am a local personality who happens to be heard on the air and sometimes seen on TV. There are people who do what I do and they literally think they're as big as the artist or the celebrity they're talking to. No, big mistake. My job is this, you have the celebrity, you have me, and then you have the audience. Audience is hoping that I'm gonna ask certain questions and hopefully I'm gonna ask those questions or maybe even better questions to that celebrity. That celebrity is gonna try to get that information to that audience. The way they do that is through me. I'm the middleman who's trying to get all the information put back and forth. And if I can do a great job with that, then I've made everybody happy. The audience is going to remain listening all the time. And that celebrity is going to want to talk to me all the time because they know I'm going to represent them. I'm representing everybody, not just myself, not just my radio station. I'm representing the audience and I'm representing the celebrity. It just goes back and forth. And when I do my interviews, I try to make it as conversational as possible. Plus, I am always listening to what the person is saying because they may turn around and come up and say something that maybe they originally was going to talk about, and then suddenly we're on something. I remember um, one of the things that stood out for me was uh, Danny Fernandez uh, doing an interview with him about his last record, and he just got into this whole thing about what it was all about, about his girlfriend breaking up with him, that's all we talked about for like 15 minutes was just the heartbreak that he had. I listened to every other interview that he did. He didn't go near that. I got, was able to get to the core with that. And the reason why, he knows me. I've known him for years. He trusts me. He trusted me enough to go into that place to really talk about his feelings. Those are the kind of interviews I enjoy. Sure, you're going to have the fun interviews where people are going to you know, say this and that, but I enjoy more of getting to the real core of things. And if we can have a really good conversation, that's going to come across whether it be on the radio or on television. I love that you use the word trust because I think that really is integral to a good interview is that, that they trust you, that you're not going to try to make them look bad in the end. And I love that you mentioned to the class you use uh, Twitter and their Twitter uh, feed as as, as a source of um, um, uh, as a source of information for how you're going to approach the interview. Let, let me put it this way: Twitter to me is probably the best thing, not just for information, but it's a great representation. And I'm going to put it to you this way: First, I'm going to go with the celebrity part because the celebrity is always tweeting out, whether it's them or their people doing it, of what's going on in their lives. So that's a great way to help tie into your interviews. But also, and uh, something I didn't mention before, but I want to make mention now, which is very important to everybody listening and watching. Um, Twitter, if you have a Twitter, that represents who you are. So if you come in to my office saying you want a job and you say, well, I do this and I do that, great. You can say whatever you want on paper. But if I go on your Twitter, and I see you doing stuff where you're putting people down, uh, you're you know swearing, you're you know talking about mutilating whatever. Um, I see a really bad shady side to you because this is what you're tweeting out to your friends. Why do I want that person representing my company? Don't want it. So people have to realize when it comes to Twitter and even Facebook, if you're going to put stuff up there that is not a good image for the radio station or wherever you're going to work, you are not going to be hired. That, to me, is a great representation in who that person is. Excellent. Good advice today from our Radio Humber alum, Rudy Blair. Thanks, Rudy. Thanks, guys.